so today we are going to solve a easy practice problem using sparse table if you don't know what sparse table is i recommend watching my sparse table playlist first the problem is catapult that ball from spots i'll put the problem link in description for people who want to try it on themselves and if you can pause the video and read the question now but uh, i'll just give you a brief about the question so here you can see you have n cities and q queries and each city has a hill whose height is given so basically the n elements of an array represent those hills then you have q queries each q query has two numbers a and b okay so the condition of catapulting the ball from city a to city b is that the throw will be successful if and only if there is no hill in between city a and city b that is strictly higher than city a and at the end of processing these q queries you have to tell how many successful throws you have made so let's see this example so here uh, n equals to 7 means you have 7 cities and in each city there is a hill and the array represents the height of the hills in these corresponding cities okay and you have 3 queries so uh, I have used one based indexing for convenience of explaining uh, in this diagram so let's see for query uh, for first query city a is 3 and city b is 5 so if you throw a ball from city in number 3 to city number 5 you can see that there is no hill in between which is greater than the height of the hill that is present in city number 3 so this is a successful successful throw and so your count of successful throw becomes 1 right now for query number 2 from city 2 to city 5 if you see city 2 if you throw a ball from city 2 to city 5 it will be impossible because uh, the city, the hill in city 3 is higher than the hill, in, hill present in city 2 so this is not a successful throw and for query 3 from city number 4 to city number 6 from city number 4 to city number 6 okay so this would be a successful throw so the total number of successful throw will be 2 hence the output is 2 okay so now how do we solve this question using sparse table okay so let's say let's see if my city L and city R are conjugative that means they are next to each other so the height of the hills does not matter because you can anyway throw from city L to city R so this would be a successful throw but if your city L and city R are not next to each other uh, let me draw an example let's say this is your city L and this is your city R and in between there are lots of cities uh, starting from L plus 1 to R minus 1 okay so so what should we do now right uh, one thing we can do is to check for what is the largest hill or the hill with maximum height present from present in this range from L plus 1 to R minus 1 why because if we know what is the a largest hill that is present in this range l plus 1 to r minus 1 then you can check that if height of this hill if I, let's say let's call it h so you can say that if height of hill h is greater than height of l then you cannot make a successful throw because then the ball will go and bounce back right uh, so for success for a successful throw you can say that maximum value in the range of ra from l plus 1 to r minus 1 should be less than equals to height of l right so this is our condition and if this condition holds then we add one successful throw to the final count i hope it's clear now so if it's not clear then you can ask in comment section it was a easy question 
so let's jump to code okay so i have already written the code for this question so i'll just walk you through my code you have uh, n cities q queries and the value of k is equals to log n because your sparse table is is going to be of size n log n right array represents the hill heights table is for sparse table so here i have taken input for n and q and i have resized my array to size n uh, resized my sparse table to size n log n then build table this build table function is already discussed in second video of sparse table playlist i guess uh, this is just a sparse table to find range maximum query right and then this is your final this is what going to be your final answer to total successful count i have written uh, taken the variable as count then i have taken uh, for q queries i have taken two inputs l and r and because these are one based indexing so l minus minus and r minus minus so the first condition is if l plus one equals equals to equals to r that means if my heels are next to each other then this is always going to be a successful throw so i have increased the count here and if it's not if l and r are not next to each other then what you do you query for range max query in the range l plus 1 to r minus 1 right now here there is just slight change in the code in uh, this range max query from regular uh, range max query using sparse table that I have used this value in small l equals to minimum of l and r and in uh, small r equals to maximum of l and r because the examples that we have uh, taken here i am always throwing balls from left to right but it does not have to be you there might be some queries in which uh, you have to ball you have to throw a ball from right to left right so that's why i have taken the uh, minimum value to be the minimum index to be the lower value and maximum index to be the higher value right okay so once you have uh, taken l and r value once you find l and r value you can just query in the regular fashion that you do from sparse table and after getting the maximum height you check that if it's less than equals to the hill present in, in at index l then only you increase the count and at the end you sub uh, you return the count right so let's submit this code by the way the next question that i have planned for this series is uh, is a good question actually that one uses sparse table and binary search in an interesting question so i'll upload that video probably tomorrow or the day after tomorrow so stay tuned for that okay so i guess i'll see you guys in the next one